Okay, so we're going to talk about sickle cell anemia. And in specifics, we're going to talk about the pathophysiology of sickle cell anemia. Now, sickle cell anemia can be abbreviated as SCA. And so that's the abbreviation that we're going to use for this. Now, what do we need to know about sickle cell anemia, the disease? It's genetic. So what does that mean? That means that it's something that is inherited, right? So let's, let's draw a DNA strand to explore that a little bit more. So here's my DNA strand, okay? Now let's put, let's pretend that each one of these pink dots represents a specific letter on my DNA strand. And I'm gonna keep them all the same color so we know that this is normal. Now what happens in sickle cell anemia is that one of these letters that should be normally placed on my DNA strand is incorrect. And this incorrect placement is going to cause a mutation. And these letters represent the name of a nucleic acid in our nucleic acid strand in our DNA. So we see that there's a green one, does it match the rest? It's not correct. So this is going to cause a mutation, okay? And this is what happens anytime we have an error in our letter placement along our DNA strand. This mutation in specific with sickle cell anemia is going to cause an issue with hemoglobin, okay? So as we're discussing sickle cell anemia, let's keep in mind, one, it's genetic, right? We know that it's an error in the placement of our letters here on our DNA strand, and that error is going to cause a mutation in the hemoglobin. Hemoglobin, we know, is the oxygen-carrying capacity of our red blood cells. So this hemoglobin should normally be hemoglobin, and that's our abbreviation, A, but this error has turned it into hemoglobin S. That's the mutation. So what does it look like? Well, this is what happens to the red blood cell as a result of this error. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna draw a red blood cell. This is gonna be my normal red blood cell, okay? Now let's describe this red blood cell as we know it. We know this red blood cell is round, okay? We know that we can further describe it as disc-shaped. You might hear some people describe it as donut shaped. I certainly wouldn't. We can recognize that indentation in the center, but it's not all the way through, so it wouldn't be a true donut shape. What else do we know? We know that red blood cells are smooth and we know that they are flexible. That's particularly important when we're talking about red blood cells trying to make its way through our microvascular system. And then of course, most important of all is they carry oxygen. This is how we get oxygen delivered to our body's tissues and our organs because our red blood cell carries oxygen. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to come over here and I'm gonna put O2 right here. So I know that my normal healthy red blood cell carries oxygen. Now, let's talk about how sickle cell anemia, that genetic mutation changes the game. So again, we would have started with a normal red blood cell, but this image here, this image here is my mutation, okay? So what happens? Well, we have a change in the hemoglobin. So let, let's visit that change. And normal hemoglobin, so our normal red blood cell, right, which is here, our hemoglobin looks something like this, all right? That's my image of our hemoglobin. <clears throat> Looks like it's bounded. Now in our abnormal hemoglobin, which we're gonna make green, it looks something like this. So imagine that that normally bound hemoglobin that I drew becomes unwound, and now it's almost in a string form. Well, what does that change? We know that normal hemoglobin carries oxygen. Hey, buddy. We know that abnormal hemoglobin, hemoglobin S, right, our mutation, does not carry oxygen. So no O2 for you. In addition to that, 
it's going to change the structure of the red blood cell. So we had this nice, healthy, happy, round red blood cell with oxygen. Now we end up with this, a crescent-shaped red blood cell. So we know this shape is more like a crescent now, and that's where we get the term sickle because sickles are in the shape of this, okay? Now, instead of being smooth and flexible, we're actually stiff and sticky. And this creates a problem specifically in circulation. When you throw some stiff, sticky cells in the mix, you can really cause some big issues. And we're gonna talk about some complications and signs and symptoms in a separate video. So what's the issue that we, we really are ending up with here? Well, here would be a normal distribution of of red blood cells. So here's our normal distribution of happy, healthy red blood cells that carry oxygen. Well, in sickle cell anemia, we have some normal happy, healthy red blood cells, but we also have some crescent-shaped, abnormal, non-oxygen-carrying red blood cells in the mix. So over here, we have a normal O2 level. We're happy with that. But here, we have a low O2 level, and we're not happy with that. As a compensatory mechanism, the body is going to try to replace these bad red blood cells, okay? It's gonna try to replace the red blood cells because we know that we've got a mighty, mighty organ in our body that's going to start destroying it. That organ is going to be our spleen. So if I came over here and I pretended like I'm drawing our spleen here, and I'm making it red, okay? Because we know that our spleen is red and spongy. So what happens here? Our blood gets filtered here in our spleen. All the red blood cell goes through our spleen. When we throw some of these bad boys through our spleen, our spleen is going to start to rapidly destroy it. Our body recognizes that we're having an increase in destruction of our red blood cells, and so it's going to try to replace it. The problem is, is that our body trying to replace these red blood cells with some healthy ones is not going to work as fast as the spleen is destroying it. So we're always in this anemic state, this low oxygen state, okay? And that basically is the pathophysiology of sickle cell anemia. So we know that it's a genetic disorder. We know that this genetic disorder causes a mutation in the hemoglobin. We should normally have hemoglobin A, and instead we end up with hemoglobin S. We know that hemoglobin A should look something like this and that it carries oxygen just fine. But we know that this mutation turns it into hemoglobin S, which then kind of images like this and doesn't carry oxygen at all. As a result, we end up with this sticky, stiff, odd-shaped red blood cell instead of this nice round one that does the function of carrying oxygen. And because of that, we end up in an anemic state because we've got a lot of red blood cells floating around that don't carry oxygen. All right. Now, to talk more about treatment and to talk more about what we can do to prevent and uh, what we should look out for with complications, let's, we'll check out the other videos for that. All right. But this is your pathophysiology of sickle cell anemia in a nutshell. Talk to you soon.